2 in Springfield, Missouri. And I have to show you my hotel room before we get into this. I'm gonna tell you about what video is coming, but look at this hotel. I've never, I mean, I've stayed in a bunch of hotel rooms. Nothing quite like this. Here's the room. You're like, oh, that's a pretty neat room. I mean, it's pretty cool and there's little stuff. There's a cool workspace here. I'm exporting a video right now, but right here is the thing we have to talk about. Check this thing out. So that, do you know what that is? Let me take you in here. Swanky cool bathroom, but pow, pow, right there. This is actually the shower. I understand, you're gonna stay in a hotel room with people you know, but the fact that you can see straight through is a little strange to me. It's a cool feature, it's a very modern hotel, but it's still a little strange. So, okay, here's the setup. For the video today, we're gonna go and we're gonna chase a 1940 Martin D18. Now this is a proper original pre-war D18, and it belongs to John, uh, John Chapman from the Acoustic Shop. So we're gonna hear the story, we're gonna look at that guitar, and we're gonna just talk about pre-war guitars. Are they better? Should you feel shame, guilt, embarrassment that you don't own one? Should you save up $70,000 to buy one? So I think you can infer most of my answers to those questions, but it's gonna be a fun video. So let's go downstairs. Let's go get uh, get picked up by the Chappers and uh, let's go hang out. So the hotel is actually, I think it's like a LEED certified building, which means it's like super efficient and green, but it really is beautiful. So this is the main area. There's a mezzanine and a gym up here that's really cool. And then there's also this restaurant here. But this hotel's like maybe a mile or so from the acoustic shop. But it's a very cool space. And uh, I like the modern-y stuff to it. Um, it's interesting that it's, you know, in Springfield. And I'm not picking on Springfield. But it's an interesting choice. Cool hotel. Breakfast was so expensive. $9 for an egg sandwich. Hello. John. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Did anyone ever call you John Thon? No. Okay, well, that's what I call don't, my brother. Don't ever do that again. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's what I call my brother, Jonathan. Here's the weird thing. We talked about this yesterday. I have a brother, Jonathan, Jason, and Justin. You have a Jonathan, a Jason, and a Jeremy. Yeah. So crazy. And a Jeremiah. That's right. I'm not Jeremiah. I didn't make the cut. You, know. you didn't make the cut. Yeah. Jason Maya. Yeah, yeah they're like, Jason Maya. <laughs> Jason, Jason Maya. It's cool. go for Jason well, for short. <laughs> today the name of the game is talking about chasing vintage guitars and like pre-war guitars. guitars. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have some pre-war guitars that we I should do. talk about. I do. I got a couple. Cool. And then I w hopefully we'll find some pre-war guitars that mere mortals can own. And, it can uh, be done. Yeah. It can. Cool. This is my personal uh, vintage guitar. And I think like a lot of people, I never thought I'd have one. I, you know, it was one of those dream situations where you're just like, I don't know how I would ever have it. Now, this one's about as ugly. And I think this is pretty much, if you're like most traveling musicians, uh, this is the kind of guitar you're gonna end up with. That pretty gorgeous, uh, untouched guitar. That's, that's, not, that's not probable. It's possible, just not probable. Um, anyway. This is a 1940 D18. It has had everything done to it uh, poorly. It has been treated bad throughout its entire life. Uh, obviously refinished. Uh, somebody did their own uh, shellac on the back. Uh, they couldn't wait for it to dry, so they hung it up, and you can see where it slid down and uh, turned into this super dark uh, finish. Uh, I've got great repairs in this guitar. It's one of my favorites. Uh, this one right here, this big crack. If you look inside there, they decided to, to cover it on the inside with a flat piece of mahogany about that big and just cover it up. The best part about it is it's not even cross-grained, it's matching grain, so, <laughs> so uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I also love, uh, there's a lot of uh, real cool things like uh, denim imprints. Again, we couldn't wait to try it out after it uh, had been, uh, uh, you know, redone, so we just gotta shove it right on the jeans right there and, <laughs> and leave it so Mark. Um, I also love, this is another one of my all-time favorite repairs. This is a splice that was put in there, which that's a tiny splice, which tells me that the hole that was there was half that size. So uh, he had to cut it to make it bigger to put that piece inside there. Oh, okay. So it's like a little, yeah, a little Lego. Yeah. yeah. So just... and... That is funny. So this, okay, so I've always thought you look like Dan Tominsky. <laughs> you sound like Dan Tominsky. That's awesome. I like yeah. that. 
And this guitar, man. Like, has a lot of that kind of vibe, yeah. I, it, it's a really cool guitar. I got this about 20 years ago. It's kind of been with me. It's been refinished, like I said. Sanded. This is real cool. If you can feel this, they sanded it, and you got up to where the pick guard is, and you can actually feel where it bevels up to oh, there. Yeah. So they actually thin the top on this guitar. Um, 1940, very interesting year. Uh, this is with the beginning of the inch and 11 sixteenths nut width. Uh, you still had your Adirondack spruce top, this backward shifted uh, bracing. But all the bad things that happened to this, this guitar probably made it Whoa, better. Whoa, that's way in there. That's I your, can't even feel it. That's your standard, yeah. The that's back crazy. standard uh, one. So yeah, at the end of, what was it, 37, right, that they moved it backwards? Uh, so this is that. But it still had the Adirondack spruce tops. Um, you can see the belly that has that has happened, and yeah, see, uh, this whole thing is kind of flipped. And we'd had to do a lot of work to make this maintain because it had been so abused. This is probably the third or fourth bridge that has been put on this guitar. Uh, my my repairman and me worked a long time to get it to perfectly seat wow. and stay, and it hasn't moved for a very long time. So we're we're real happy about that. But it's just part of the old game. These are not going to be perfect. But even with all the weirdness. It's still one of those things, it actually probably made it better. I mean, this is probably one of the biggest sounding 18s I've ever played. shifted to Dave and Dave called me up. I'd never met him before, but he called me up and he says, he says, John, I worked on your guitar. I gotta tell you, this is proof that a great guitar cannot be killed because somebody really tried to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Because uh, the finish, the back is ugly. It is ugly. Like it's this is why people thought, and I wore it with the capo that on, oh, but everybody yeah. thought the broken headstock had happened because yeah. it was blackened out. And, and if you look, the veneer came loose on this edge right here. So you can yeah. see that the veneer is loose. And so everybody assumed that, that was the guy you know that sold it to me, the store, uh, the Old Town Pink Parlor. Is that what you think? I don't, I don't think it is. I don't think no, so. all the years I've had it, I've seen no actual sign of any actual damage, but yeah. it became lore around the area that because of that loose veneer and yeah. the fact that they painted it black or darkened it black, it's just what the guy wanted to do. It has like a, there's this thing that happens right next to super resonant guitars. It feels like they have like a force field around them. intonation is great too like way up here I mean this on is a that guitar quite a bit and to have that you know with that big belly and all that stuff but it once it became there it's the real yes I'm once you look at it this, this way <laughs> it's pretty impressive but the the intonation and the frets are really interesting they're yeah. like triangle yes uh, so I'm a big fan of Evo fret wire Got it last that fret job I was when I toured I would do a fret job every yeah, a year and a half or so, completely. I'm just okay. nuts about that really? stuff. I okay. just, I dig into it hard, and I also, uh, I want it to be perfect, intonated, and okay. right dead centered. So, no extra, and they're also taller fret wire. Yeah. So, uh, the last fret job I had done on this guitar has been about 10 years ago, 11 years okay. ago, and it was with Evos, and I just want tall fret wire, and I want it to last and stay mighty, and that's part of your intonation uh, okay. staff and all that for me. This 
is like a world-class history, like this is a guitar that everyone is going to say is incredible. Mm -hmm. So, if you would sell it, if it's hanging on this wall, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's put it this way. I got this at a great price. I have been offered upwards of fifty-five, sixty-five thousand dollars for this guitar. It's not worth sixty-five thousand yeah. in the condition it's in. But if you'd insure it, replacement value. At least that for me. I just can't sell it. Yeah. I, that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. That's that's it. I I've been offered those kind of stupid numbers, and yeah. I just I, I can't do it. So. so what would you say? There are people who hold out hope, saying I don't matter as a guitar player unless I own a pre-war guitar. What would you say to that? I, I say there's great guitars being built right now. I. I, I we did a video comparing brand new guitars with this exact guitar. Yes, there's a certain charisma you will never get out of anything but these pre-war guitars, mm -hmm. and there's something there. Is it worth spending that kind of money? Gosh, I'd never do it. <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, I, I love my guitar, but the thing that you have to realize, all of us real people, real people, I, I bought this guitar for $3,500. I probably put about another $4,000 in the years that I've owned it, I could not do it much more than that. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, it just doesn't exist for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always the dream, right? It's the dream. This is the yeah. dream. And when you get a chance to get one, I say, take it, you know, do, grab it, grab with, if you got an opportunity to get one of these, you'll never be disappointed. Yeah. That's, that's what I would say, but gosh, that's a hard call. Oh yeah. <laughs> but now, uh, let me turn this around. So we did, we pulled some guitars in here, mm -hmm. and there are there are pre-war guitars. And when we say pre-war 40, mm -hmm. okay, that's like... You're but in, sort of in war, we're not war in America's war. But I, th I think 45, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like pre-1945, mm -hmm. there are guitars over here that are normal people like you and I could afford. Mm -hmm. So let's run through a couple of those real quick, okay. and then so we'll land this, we'll land this ship, but sure. plane. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this this is super cool the Kalamazoo stuff uh, if you're a again this is pre-war this is 30s era right here this is an L00 this was the simplistic version of an L00 from Gibson came out of the same factory same everything doesn't have an adjustable truss rod doesn't have some of the prettiness of what the L00 did doesn't um, have dots in the neck no dots in the neck that's super <laughs> you, special right you there you got to remember yeah you got you got to have uh, you know a little bit of special no they, and yet these sound absolutely fantastic so you know a guitar like this you could run into i mean this was a great this was literally a trash can fine before I got it so you know in a couple thousand dollars you could probably get into something like this amazing um, uh, this which is, is a, really this cool is unbelievable mm -hmm. and also ladder braced mm -hmm. uh, which is a I mean this is an iconically bluesy thumpy thumb picky. this is your delta blues monster right here this is exactly what they would want Affordable. This is one that is actually in the shop. I love these old uh, arch tops. Um, this is a uh, Gretsch New Yorker. Very, you know, a cool, uh, you know, basic player style guitar right here. And again, we're talking $900. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and, and again, even if you're not an arch top fan, this stuff is cool to have. It will inspire you to do things that nothing else will ever do. These three things are so cool in Art Deco. Mm -hmm. And how has this not been oxidized? <laughs> and Lucky, uh, you know, <laughs> the way it always is. You, sometimes you get those pieces that are that way. So know? that means this probably didn't live in a case, which is even crazier. Somebody, so I bet this never even came with a case. I'll bet money yeah. that somebody bought this. Because that's the other thing that you have to realize. Like even that D18, when it was originally purchased, you had to buy your case separately. These were, so some people went home without having one at all. Well then you have the opposite end of that. This is really cool, 1897, style 17. This is a Martin guitar. And everybody, you would think this is ridiculous. I mean, look at how perfectly straight grain that Brazilian rosewood is. crazy. Isn't that cool? So, you know, you would think this would be ridiculously expensive. 
Um, and it should old, be. Because old means expensive, yeah. always, right? No, <laughs> not in this case. Um, this guitar, you know, even if you found a super clean one, we're talking $4,000-ish, you know, maybe five, uh, six. Now, these did come with a cool case. Usually they had, like, a, a coffin-style case that yes. had the, the mohair interior and the whole thing. But uh, we don't have one of those. Okay. But look at that, ivory buttons. Look at that. Actual ones on there. Incredible. The stamp's and really cool. The stamp and the square slot. Mm -hmm. a perfectly square, square at the top. Uh, this was a stamp New York, uh, also on the inside. So very cool guitar. This is a CF Martin stamped New York. But it's it was a, made in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, correct. So they were distributed through the New York uh, uh, shop through there and and it's just you know martin thought it was much cooler to say this is new york not pennsylvania you know yes. at the time nobody knew what nazareth pennsylvania was uh so uh again super cool uh here's a cool factoid for you the inside of this guitar in pencil is the name of the actual builder that built this guitar and the date that is there and it's in you know been put on the inside which is cool if you put a mirror in there you can actually see the builder and i don't remember his name right okay. now but super cool anyway yeah and how is this braced this one is x braced uh i believe what year did my, here's a question a trivia question that i don't remember the answer to hey, you're what probably year did, stump me what year did martin start x bracing i don't remember i mean it was 1890s <laughs> Yeah, I want to say this one is X braced. Um, I can't see it right now, but I remembered it being X braced. Um, it's way back. Oh, yeah, so, no chance. It's probably back here. <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to show a mirror back there. I don't know. So you guys tell us. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out and put it in the. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they can tell all of us. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll put it in the description down below. First right answer gets a free t shirt from me. Ooh. So, okay. I'm going to be in there first. There is a, uh, there's a machismo. There's a, uh, a mojo that happens with pre war guitars. Nothing else can do it. I'm sorry, but you cannot remanufacture age. Yeah. You just can't do it. And uh, so anybody who's asking, you know, is it worth grabbing a pre war guitar? Absolutely. Is it worth spending your entire life savings for one? Probably not. You yeah. can get, I honestly will tell you this, I've said it a hundred times, I think better guitars being made today than ever before, and I include the greatest of uh, guitars, but the big thing they don't have is 80 years, 100 years of age. Yeah. But one thing I completely agree is that I I think we live in the best time of acoustic guitars. Ever. Absolutely. Like they are, there are more from... You know, Gallagher over here to Guild and Larave and Bourgeois, Bourgeois to Guild to, there's all kinds Burke, of, an Atkin in here. Boucher, we normally stop. I mean, there's just, everybody's building great guitars right now. I personally have fallen in love with more guitars in the last mm. 10 years than probably <laughs> ever before. That's it. it. And even owning that, you know, there's, there's a certain magic that comes from some of these new guitars that just can't be had by anybody else. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy. This is I'm John. Sorry, I, I am John. John. He is John, <laughs> not John Thon. John Thon, no. no. Okay, and these are amazing vintage guitars that you can buy them if you want. You can afford most of these, but there's also unbelievable guitars. So I'll have a link to the acoustic shop, and if you guys are looking for cool guitars, and I travel the country looking at guitars, and this room, I just want to spend the rest of the day. <laughs> I spent most of yesterday in here. So can thanks for watching. See you guys later.